Hello, welcome to Maths with EJD. This is the second video I'll be doing on special cases in simplex method. And we said from the beginning that those special cases, the special cases are actually for, you know, you have degeneracy, which was treated in the previous video, degeneracy. Then there is a alternate optima, alternate optima, which we are talking about now. That's more like the idea of multiple optimal solutions that we considered in um, graphical methods too. Then there is also what we saw there. So the only new thing under simplex is the idea of degeneracy, which wasn't mentioned there. Probably that also exists for graphical method, I, I want to believe. So there's unboundedness and there is infeasibility. Infeasibility. Okay. So uh, degeneracy is already done. So in this video, I'll be going for altern alternate optima, while um, the, the other two will be coming on in previous, I mean, in subsequent videos, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about alternate optima. Alternate optima. That's more, more or less like multiple optimal solutions. Okay. Um, alternate optima. Alternate optima exists exists when when there are multiple optimal solutions multiple optimal solutions to to a linear okay i mean we are, we are used to lp already to a linear programming problem Often occurring, often occurring, often occurring when, when the objective function, when the objective function is parallel, when the objective function is parallel to a constraint, parallel to a constraint at the Optimal vertex at the optimal vertex. Okay. Yeah, we have a very good example of that waiting to be checked. So look at this example for alternate optima. So here we need to maximize, maximize z equals x1 plus x2. And then that is subject, subject to um x1 plus x2 is less than or equal to 4 so you can see the this and this are parallel for sure all right so x z equals x1 plus x2 and that is subject to x1 plus x2 less than or equal to 4 then we have the non negative uh non negativity condition that x1 is greater than or equal to 0 and x2 is also greater than or equal to 0 okay so that's all we have of course don't forget this is the canonical form the canonical form which is the original form of the problem. So for us to be able to solve that in simplex, um, solve that using simplex method, we need to change it to the standard form where we have all equalities. We remove all inequalities so we can have inequalities. I mean, we remove all inequalities to have in, uh, to have equalities rather. Again, we remove all inequalities which we have in the canonical form. So we can have standard form, uh, which are all equalities or which are equations uh, in another manner of speaking. For instance, now we have maximized. So the objective function will actually have to be in that form where instead of just having Z equals something, you have Z minus X1 minus X2 equals zero. That's what happens in standard form. And then that will subject to be subject to you know, it was x1 plus x2 less than or equal to 4. So we need to balance that out. So we have x1 plus x2 plus a slag variable s1 is now equal to 4. Um, And now we just have x1, x2, and s1 all greater than or equal to 0. So only one constraint here, right? So we need to now set up our tableau. So we go for the simplex tableau. So this is a very unusual one because we have just a simple a single constraint so simplex tableau 
will be something like this. You know, um, starting from the previous video, I started with a very simple way of doing the simple X thing. So you don't have a very serious table. You just have it directly in matrix form. So you just have a basic variable, right? And now our basic variable for starters will simply just be S1, okay? Because in the beginning, the basic variables, the non-basic variables, we add, you have the slacks rather as basic variables. And then, I mean, it's only one here. So we just have, we now have Z, all right? We have Z. Um, and then we can do what I did the other time. So you have one, one, one all the way. So now this is, should be this should be X1, X2, S1. And then you can have B. So this is one, one, one. Then we can do this. And B is actually four here. Yeah? All right. So for Z now, we have minus one, minus one, you know, minus one, minus one. Of course, this is zero for S1 because there's no S1 there. And then this would be zero also. So this is what the tableau looks like. So, I mean, it's straight in matrix form. So we can just start working with that. Okay. Now, the question is, okay, I can actually do this to cut that off. So Z is not technically part of the basic variables, but I mean, we just put it that way for um, how the tableau is set up. So this is what we have now. The question is, we don't want to perform simplex method on this. Um, first of all, is it necessary to do that? We have this. So you can see we have double, we have negative value in two places. But then um, you can choose anyone you like. You can actually choose anyone you like. You can go for X1 first, you can go for X2 first. But uh, let's take it that X1 is going first. Well, in fact, um, okay, let's just choose, let, let me see. Since both X1 and X2 have negative coefficients in the objective row, either can enter the basis. So for simplicity, let's take X1. Let X1 enter. So anyone can enter, right? So, I mean, the ratio is not even important here because um, we have ju we just decide what is going to enter. So we have just chosen that this is, we have just accepted that X1, this is what we are using. So this one goes. And then the ratio is not necessary here, especially uh, except for to fulfill a righteousness. So you have four divided by one equals four. We don't have anything to compare it with. So automatically we just have this. Okay. We just have that. So it means that this value here is going to be our pivot. Okay. So that, that is already one interestingly. So whatever is below it, just, um you know, just change this to zero. And don't forget that X1 is coming to replace S1. X, S1. Um, by the time we are all done with that, so I can just make it like one minus one, one minus one, one zero, four zero. Okay, um, all this. So this is row one, and this is row two. So now this is my. So this is our pivot now. Okay, so this is our pivot, because it is at intersection of the two black boxes. Okay, the two black rectangles. That is why it is our pivot. So now this one is circled because it's the most negative we are choosing, right? Uh, probably I should remove it to avoid confusion, actually. So the uh, so this is our pivot now. So it's already one, interestingly. So uh, we can just go ahead. So we have um, so we have row one remains row one. Uh, let me shift it back a little bit so that these two can be together. Row one remains row one. Now row two is going to be root the new root is going to be the old root two plus the old row one so that we can get zero there right so here we have one 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 four okay and then um this is minus one plus one that's simply zero minus one plus one is also zero zero plus one is one zero plus four is four so we have this like this um i mean if you bring back all the all the apparatus, so to speak. So this is BV. So instead of S1, we have X1 now. And this, this is just Z like that. So this is X1, X2, S1, S2. Okay. So at the end of the day, right, this is optimal solution. As you can see, everything is either zero or positive. So here we have, um, this is simply optimal solution because there's no longer negative value there. So we have reached optimal solution. And then we can now say that um, x1, x1 is equal to zero. Um, sorry. Uh, so for basic variable now, basic variable. So talking about basic variable, 
we just have one, which is x1. And that x1 is equal to 4. As you can see here, it is equal to 4. Automatically, the non-basic variables are all 0. Non-basic variables, okay? Non-basic variables, they are all... So you have x2, which is 0. You have s1, which is also 0. These are the two non-basic variables. So for the um, optimal optimal objective function value, objective function value, right? That will simply be z. And what is that z? That z is also equal to 4, as you can see here. So that z is equal to 4. So it means that you basically have uh, x1 equals 4, x2 equals 0, and then z is equal to 4. That's all you have. Of course, you can neglect x1 because s1, uh, the slag variable, because it just came into the picture, um, you know, to just it just came we, we, we don't really need it right you just need to get the final solution so basically here you see x1 is 4 and x2 is 0 now we are, you know we are talking about alternate optima now the reason for the opt alternate optima is because we have options right what if instead of choosing x1 here we are choosing x2 so let's check that so now let's talk about alternate optima now because that's exactly the purpose for this video so for the alternate optima now, so what if, so, okay, we have got one optimum solution, right? This is uh, one optimum solution, one optimum solution. So now let's check for an alternate optimum, right? So, and the way to do that is we go back, we go back to what we have, right? We have BV. So like we go back to the very original one where we we still have S1. So we have BV and S1, Z. And of course here now we have uh, X1, X2. Then we have only S1 and then we have B. Okay. So again, original place, we have um, 1114 minus 1 minus 100. Zero, zero. Okay. 1114. One, from the problem we have the minus one minus one zero zero that's all we have and don't forget um, how we had to make our decision again look at this place they are all negative interestingly we should go for the most negative more interestingly the most negative is the same so it's both minus one and minus one here so initially we chose x1 we went for x1 what if you don't go for x1 and you go for x2 right so if you go for x2 see what we have and then we don't even have to worry, but for the case sake of fulfilling our righteousness, the ratio doesn't matter here. So it's still four divided by one. So, and that is four. So it means this is basically our pivot, all right? So um, in that case now, we can, so we shift our attention to that. And then we have um, one, 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 four, minus one, minus one, zero, zero. And this is now our pivot, okay? This is R1 r2 and to get so we just need to make this one into zero basically so of course in that case it's already one so we don't have to worry the new r1 is the old r1 the new r2 now is going to be the new the old r2 plus the new uh, plus the old r1 okay so that minus one plus one can be zero so then we have um okay one 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 four like this Okay, and this is, okay, I mean, it can be, we don't know if it is zero yet, or do we do what we have to do? So minus one plus one is zero, minus one plus one is zero, zero plus one is one, zero plus four is four, okay? Exactly, I think it's exactly what we got before, zero, 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 one, four. I mean, zero, zero, one, four, exactly what we have, right? So you can bring back all those things. So this is uh, the basic variables now. Now, you see that X, X2, Okay, what are we supposed to say here? X1 replaces X1, okay? X2 rather replaces S1. You know, in the other case, it was X1 that replaced S1. So now this is actually X2 and Z, okay? X2 and Z. And interestingly, we have reached optimal solution because everything here is negative. I mean, everything here is positive or zero. So it's not, everything there is non-negative. That's what I meant to say. Um, so now we have again optimal 
solution, optimal solution has been reached because everything is uh, non-negative. So now what do we have? The basic variable has changed. Basic variable is just um, x2. So x2 now is equal to 4. As you can see, x2 is 4. And then we have, um, okay, x2 is 4. And then we have um, non-basic variables. Anything that is not basic is non Anything that is not basic is non basic. <laughs> That's interesting. So non basic variables, okay, non basic variables. And what are they? We have x1. Once it's not basic, it's zero. Then s1 is also zero. And then for the um, optimal, optimal objective function value, objective function, okay, again, as you can see from the table, that is four. So Z is actually four, okay? Now you see we have, just if I want to just replicate what we have here now. So we have one optimum solution. It means we have another optimum solution where we have X1 to be zero, X2 is now four, and we still have the same Z, okay? So this is another, another, another optimal solution. Okay, another optimal solution. Okay, you know, we are talking about alternate optima. So we can say that, therefore, therefore, for this problem, for this problem, we have, we have two alternate, two alternate optima, two alternate Optima, okay, Optima. I don't know why I keep writing Optima. So alternate Optima. It's like my hand has been programmed to always write Optima, okay? So uh, so if you like, you can say AO1, that is when X1 is equal to four and X2 is equal to zero, right? Um, Which other one? Um, Yeah. And then we have another one, alternate optima two, if you like. So you have x1 is zero and x2 is equal to four. Interestingly, the two of them give the same z. So if you go to the original z, right? The original z is actually, um, it's actually z equals x1 plus x2, right? So z equals x1 plus x2. So you see, if you do z1, that is z equals uh, okay, well, uh, or better still, we can just say Z, right? So we say Z is X1 plus X2. We already know that. But then if you go for Z1, where you say Z at, uh, you know, 4 comma 0, 4 comma 0, that is simply 4 plus 0, and that is 4. If you like Z at 2, which is Z at 0 comma 4, right? That is uh, 0 plus 4, you know, now, this is x1, this is x2. This is x1, this is x2. So 0 plus 4 is also still 4. Therefore, uh, I mean, for this problem, we have two alternate optima, and the two of them give the same um, optimal objective uh, function value, right? And that is exactly why we talk about uh, alternate optima. So it can be 4, 0, it can be 0, 4, basically. And I think that's the same thing we had for graphical solution graphical method where we were talking about multiple uh, multiple optimal solution so this is about this is so with what we have done now we see we have uh, alternate optima if you have not subscribed to this channel be sure to do that right away and hit the notification bell so you can always get notified each time a new video is released don't forget to comment so you, uh, so i can know if you wanted to teach a topic or solve a problem of course, you also want to like and share so that more people can have access to all this great learning there because there's so much more coming your way. So now I've talked about degeneracy and alternate optima. So the next will be unboundedness. And afterwards, I'll be talking about infeasibility. Watch out for this and keep optimizing. Bye.